Ted, um, a lot of news. Was it today or yesterday? But I noticed it today. Uh, a lot of news in the newspaper um, about Marcus Rushford. So anyone who's not in the UK uh, and maybe not a football fan, Marcus Rushford is uh, a player in Manchester United and he also plays for the England team. He's about 23 years old. And he was the one that really pushed extending you know, free meals for school children, those who are eligible into the summer period, particularly last year, right? Because of the, the COVID pandemic and the effect that it's going to have on, on young children from uh, underprivileged backgrounds. And, and in fact, Marcus actually came from an underprivileged background. He, he, and it's why he's so passionate about it. But there's an article about him saying that um, there's a company who was supposed to be supplying these meals. And he says that the quality of what they're producing is, in his words, unacceptable. And the company turned out to be Charles Wells, right, Ted? That, that's absolutely right. So um, let, let's just uh, share the screen so we can sort of see some of this, the, the, the visual um, uh, aspect of what we're talking yes, about. So we're talking about Chartwells, you're absolutely right, um, who are, you know, specialise in what they say, serving up uh, happy and healthy meals. Um, let's pull up uh, one of the articles. So uh, here is Marcus Rashford himself. Um, this is with his mother. And the, you know, this is from the Times, but it's all over every single newspaper. It's all over the media, on social media. And essentially what's happening is that the government, people have been given 30 pounds vouchers and, and Chartwells are supplying these 30 pounds worth of food. And on the right hand side, you can see is what 30 pounds will buy you in Asda. And on the left hand side is what gets delivered to you by Chartwells if you're in possession of one of these vouchers. Now, if you look carefully, Moeed, I think you might be able to notice a very, very slight difference between the two. Yeah, that is a huge, huge difference. I mean, on the left-hand side, that looks like what? Six, seven pounds? What do they calculate it as? I think, I think they say you can get it for five pounds 50 in Asda, Moeed. Wow, so, that, so there's 24 pounds 50 going somewhere. That just seems to be unaccounted for. You're absolutely right. Well, um, you know, and, 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 and there's a long sort of article. This is another um, interesting one. So, this was posted by Marcus Rashford on his social media, uh, and this contains a hamper meant to contain three days worth of food for one family. Um, I, I uh, you know, I mean, it, it kind of, it, 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 it beggars belief. It, it really does. I don't think, I mean, I have a family of, well, I have five kids, Moeed. So, um, you know, my food bill is absolutely, you know, it, 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 it makes me cry every evening, but um, <laughs> you, know, the, you know, there's no way that you're going to actually get a decent meal that allows you to study uh, with that amount of food. Now, Moe, you know, when, when, when something like this comes to my attention, um, you know, everybody's looking at the company and, you know, who's responsible and, you know, the kind of the, 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 the political angle. But unfortunately, you know, it's my accountancy kind of tendencies. I've really struggled. And, and my first thing is, let's go and look at Chartwells. Let's go and look at the company that's actually behind it. And, and this is Chartwells Independent. This is their, um, their website. Mm. And I'm interested to know who they are. So I go and have a look at Meet Their Team. And here are some of the people from Chartwells. Mm. Uh, we've got uh, Noella uh, Jones, who's the managing director. But I really want to know the name of the company because I want to go and dig around and have a look at their financials. Now, it's very difficult to find out who the company is. So I go down the bottom. It's Chartwells Independent, but there isn't a Chartwells Independent limited company. I can't find one. Hmm. But what I can do is if I look in something like the terms and conditions, yes. it's by Compass Group. I'm like, OK, so compass group uk and ireland limited okay so this is the company that kind of dictates the terms and conditions it's obviously you know chartwells is a brand of compass group okay so that's our first that's our first clue i then go to company's house and i find oh well there is a chartwells limited so right. let's go and have have a look at chartwells limited and chartwells limited if we look at the accounts uh, and all we do got to do is to click on here and we find the, uh, we look at the filing history and at the accounts, what we find is that we're actually looking at a dormant company. 
Okay. So Chartwells Limited is dormant. It doesn't trade. Oh, wow. So if you're a company and you don't trade, you still have to file your accounts. That's part of the legal, but it doesn't actually trade. So we can have a look at the PDF. Okay. Mm. And, and I've got it. I've got it on my next tab. So here is Chartwells Limited. Um, you notice the, the directors, the named directors are nothing to do with our original directors. So when we looked at these guys, none of these guys are named as actual board directors. So this is an important distinction. Are we dealing with a director who's actually a, a director or just a name, like a name director? So you could call yourself director. It doesn't make you a, a legal director, if that makes sense. Yes. And what yes. we notice here also is that the immediate holding company is Compass Contract Services Limited. Uh -huh. So let's go and have a look at Compass Contract no, Services Limited. Finances, are we? Absolutely. So, so once again, very easy. We're back on company's house. We search for the name. We find it. We click on uh, the accounts. And what do we find? We find another dormant oh, company. Oh, no. <laughs> so, the, so the dormant company is owned by another dormant company. You'll notice that the directors are the same. It's exactly same, the yeah. same people. Yeah. And the immediate holding company of this company is Compass Group UK and Ireland Limited. So Surely we're not going to be find finances this time. We're, we're not going to be put off yet. So <laughs> here we go. We go and have a look and we find actual a set of accounts. So I'm feeling really pleased Great. with myself at this point, Moe. Um, we'll have a quick run through. Lots of directors. Suddenly wow. lots of directors have all, have all popped out. So uh, quite where they all came from, I'm, I'm not sure. But a um, there's a few. Right? There's a yeah, lots of resigned, lots of been appointed. Uh, there's a few who are, who are who are similar. So you'll notice, for example, um, uh, Jody Lee, for example, is a is is also a director. So you can start to see there's a bit of continuity here. Hmm. But I want to really get into the income statement. So I'm just going to whiz down through the accounts to the first set of accounts, and here we go. And the turnover is zero. What? So something's going on here. So basically, these guys, they've got admin expenses that they're putting through the company, but they're, but they're not making any sales through the company. Mm. Now, they've got to be making sales somewhere because somebody somewhere is getting 30 quid for, for all of that, that package. So I'm not going to be put. And this is fine. You know, people do set up companies just to run costs through that. That's, you know, sometimes that's part of a kind of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the financial structure of a group of companies. Right. So I'm going to whiz down to the bottom and I'm going to find out. So this is these notes usually appear right at the very bottom of the accounts, Moeed. Yeah. And we find that the immediate parent is Compass Group Holdings Limited. So we're going to go and have a look at their accounts. Fingers here crossed. we have Compass Group. So here we have Compass Group Holdings PLC. So let's yep. go and have a look at their accounts. And again, we want to look at the income statement. And what do we yes, find? We find income. turnover. Okay. So turnover, 425 million pounds or 426 million pounds. And the operating expenses so that's the cost of running the business rent rate light heat salaries marketing hr operations and the food that they're selling is only 122 right. so so basically that's a bit like you know they're buying for five pounds and selling for 20 pounds for example so i'm sitting there feeling quite pleased as you probably are right now moe yeah. thinking aha smoking <laughs> gum we've got them just a quick question Sorry, for because normally yes. normally you would have cost of goods sold separate, but is that a legal requirement to do that? Because we don't see that here. It's it it's a general requirement. I mean, a lot of companies don't do it, and they usually do it for a particular reason. So, if you were to look at, for example, uh, National Grid. So National Grid, their costs are running a network rather than buying and selling gas. They just transport it. So they don't really have a cost of sales and therefore they don't include it in their accounts. So companies for which cost of sales is not relevant tend not to include that line. But you're absolutely right. I would expect to see a cost of sales in here. So, so you can get away, if you can justify excluding it, 
it, it, it's not illegal effectively. So you can still get it past the auditors. That, now, could mean, that could mean that there is more to this revenue than just selling. Well, it, yeah, so we and, and we're given a note and whenever we're given a note, we right. kind of need to go and dig in a little bit and have a look at what that note is. So let's go yeah. and look at the note too. So we scroll down very, very quickly uh, uh, and it's pretty easy to find here it comes so note two and it tells us that the turnover is from advice and consultancy services huh. so this is not the smoking gun we were looking for so what we've got here is that, that this company the only sales being booked through this company is actual advice and consultancy not the purchase and consolidation and sending out of food parcels so we carry on on our trip and we're going to go and look at um, their parent company. Yeah. So again, I scroll down to the bottom. Now, what we suddenly find with this company is it owns a lot of companies. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly scrolling through all of the companies that this one owns. And you can see, I mean, you know, you've got companies all over the world which are owned by this company. This is very much a holding company. Look mm -hmm. at all of them through Canada. Australia. I mean, they're everywhere. USA. Yeah, there as well. More in USA, UK. So there's a lot of. I mean, you know, there are a lot of companies here. So I'm just scrolling up to try and find the parent company. At some point, we'll get there. Wow, even Gabon was there. Uh, yeah, it, it's 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 you know it's it, it's mind-boggling how many they own so here we go here so we go. the ultimate parent company is ah. um is compass group plc and, and basically one. they're saying this is directly held by compass group plc yeah well that's a name, so, that's a name that i certainly recognize absolutely so they supply food to the airlines for example you know yeah. that you know they're, they're they're all over the place you know and um uh, yeah and and they're a big company so and they're a listed company so the accounts are easily to easily available and they're on the next tab so here they are and we see that the revenue is 24.9 billion pounds and the operating costs, which includes the cost of sales, as you rightly pointed out, is 23.3 billion pounds. They're making a profit of 1.6 billion pounds. Now, 1.6 billion pounds as a figure is a very big number, but yeah. as a proportion of the 24.9 billion pounds, well, it's about 6%. So it's not a massive margin running a business at a 6% operating margin. Wow. So unfortunately, the conclusion is that we can't see these numbers that Marcus Rashford is referring to in the accounts because it's all lumped in with literally hundreds of other companies around the world. Uh, and we can't actually see the specifics of Chartwell itself, which is a real shame. That's a real shame because we could have uncovered, or at least we tried to uncover some, some, some information behind the news. But that is still a small number, 6%. I mean, it's, I'm trying to recall if that's even typical for, a, for an outsourced food services business. I know they've well, been- it, it's a competitive practice. business and typically it will. I mean, supermarkets will be operating on the same sort of margins. People like Coca-Cola, they can operate on uh, uh, operating margins of 20, 30, 30%. 30 and the reason is that they've got a really good brand and so they can command a higher um, a price. Whereas, you know, food is, is very much a commoditized uh, option. Uh, and if the food is too expensive at, uh, at Sainsbury's, then, then we'll get a Tesco, for example. So it's very, very competitive. So it is a low margin business. It's a volume game. These guys are achieving the volume. The problem yeah. is when they do something like that, they end up in the news and it damages their brand and they get it in the neck. Yeah, and, and we can make some sort of educated speculation here because a company that massive, I mean, that's, that is huge. Surely they have a significant amount of purchasing power. So 
if they're going to be buying this food from wholesalers, you would assume that they can get it at a much better rate than say other companies. And therefore they should technically, and this is just my opinion, they should have more in each of these boxes than what they're delivering right now, wouldn't you say? Possibly, yeah, although you know this is, a, this but, is. But I'm just having an education. This is a for-profit company, and so you know they will have won the contract, and they they you know they bid competitively for contracts, and they win contracts because they're able to pass on that cost saving. Yeah. So what they're able to do is to say, rather than the fact that we can buy more, what they will do in their contracts is to say that you know if you speak to Fred. Um, uh, you know, Fred wholesale vegetables, he'd be able to fill a box for, you know, £35, we can do it for £30. And effectively, that, that's their pitch. So you're absolutely right that they use their muscle power, but they use their muscle power to undercut the competitors and therefore win the bids. But it doesn't, it doesn't distract from the fact that these guys, you know, if you can go into the supermarket and buy £30 worth of food on the right, you should not be getting what you see on the left actually arriving through, you know, that is definitely not acceptable. So I would say they should definitely be able to at least match and if not increase uh, what you see on the right. Don't forget, there's a bit of admin. They've got to package it up. They've got to buy it. They've got to get it to the, um, uh, to the, uh, to the, um, uh, the individuals, et cetera, et cetera. So there are additional costs um, sitting around and, and nobody would um, forego, you know, the opportunity for a company to actually, you know, cover its costs and to make a, make a, a reasonable profit. Yeah, agreed. Well, sorry, Marcus, we tried to uh, dig in and uh, find out, but it, it seems on this one, we, we haven't been able to because it's all rolled into the group business. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So it's, it's a shame that, you know, I was really hoping that we could find that smoking gun, but they've hidden it. They're running everything through the head office. They're not running anything through what is effectively a dormant uh, UK company. And this, this is interesting, then, if ever you're dealing with a company, make sure you know the legal entity that you're dealing with as well as the brand that you're dealing with, because the brand doesn't really, the, you know, Chartwells as a brand is just that it's a it's it's a it's a pretty picture it's a logo okay what the government is dealing with is they're dealing with compass group they're not dealing with chartwells limited or chartwells independent yeah absolutely and, and you know what we we have we have been able to show our viewers something interesting there which is if you can't find numbers we've just showed you how to how to look and dig and investigate so that you can find at least some numbers and get some picture rather than nothing. So I thought that was really worthwhile. That's it. So always look for the parent company. Who owns this company? Who owns this company? Keep on working up until you find them at, at, at the kind of the consolidated level. Yeah, no, a great, great, uh, great catch here, Ted, and uh, still very, very useful. And uh, you know, we're gonna. I'm look. I'm looking forward to the uh, comments from our viewers on this one because uh, this one's definitely a hot topic in the UK right now. Excellent. Okay, good to speak to you, Mairead. Take care, Ted. Thank you.